Good afternoon. <laughs> Listen, y'all probably like Coach T with the foolery. Baby. It took Coach T everything to show up on here today, okay? Everything in me. This is our last Saturday. Um, this is Abigail's last Bible study on a Saturday. We will finish her up. Actually, it was supposed to be on the 31st, but it's going to be on Tuesday. Because I have a, a session um, that has been scheduled. So we're going to actually finish up on Tuesday. Let me just put my notes in here and we will get started. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I know a lot of people may be enjoying self-care Saturday because that's what Coach T was just doing. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I complete. I didn't want to have to take... Abigail's Bible study into another week, knowing that we're gonna, you know, wrap it up on Tuesday. So, hello, hello, everyone. If you come in late, you can always go back and catch the replay. I will share share this message on my Instagram and my YouTube. Hello, YouTube family. Good afternoon, Coach T here with you today. I am his wife, Coach. All right, his wife coach, and we are wrapping up with our Abigail week six, honey, week six Bible study, week six Bible study. And so I'm going to just jump right into it. Um, I'm going to start giving y'all times on when I'm supposed to show up because mm -mm, mm -mm. the times, um, the times are not good for me. The times don't don't work well for me. Um, especially on the weekends, maybe it's on a week I could do it, but on the weekends it's really hard. Um, it just depends on my sessions, just depends on family, just depends on my self-care day. Cause you know, coach T is a believer in self-care. Okay. And so this morning, yes, I was still in the bed. It didn't, I didn't make it. I didn't get out of the bed until 12, 25 PM this afternoon. Um, and from there I had my normal breakfast schedule, even though I know it was, you know, <laughs> lunchtime. <laughs> All right. So we are on week six, week six, Abigail's Bible study, Lent season, Lent season. And Coach T is going to share a confession, honey, and going to share a confession with you as we proceed through this Bible study. So, Father, we bless you on today, God, Lord. We thank you for your amazing grace and mercy. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are, who you have been in our life, God. We thank you for uh, journeying with us on this Abigail Bible study, God. Thank you, Father, for the ones who have heard your word, God, and have received it with gladness. I pray now, God, in your son Jesus' name for the ones who will receive this word on later. Praying, God, for your promises to come forward in this hour, in this season, for wise. Praying, God, that they will hear you on today through your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. So I wanted to go ahead and pray us in. And today we're going to talk about Abigail's manifestation. Abigail's manifestation. All right. And I wanted to share with you a little bit about manifestation before we actually get into the Abigail um, story and, and, and review from last week. What have you been sowing and getting ready to reap in this season? What have you been sowing and getting ready to reap in this season? Earlier this morning, I had shared um, about... Um, you know, wives and what have they been, you know, basically sowing in their husbands? What have they been sowing in their husbands and what kind of prayers they have been praying over their husbands in this hour, in this season? And the reason being is we're in transitioning. We're in transitioning and God is getting ready to move and do some miraculous things. And one of the things that's so important for wives, and I, I think I've explained this before, um, one of the things that's important, is very important for us, is for us to be discerning. It's for us to be discerning and knowing God is getting ready to do a thing. And I just want to 
cautions, encourage, remind, wise, um, what you do, what you say, how you react, uh, the things that take place concerning um, your household, your marriage, the words that you speak of your husband, husband, all those things count. All those things matter because there will come a date of expiration. There will come a date of expiration and what you have been doing is going to come forth. What you have been doing is going to come forth. Whether you've been moody, whether you've, been, whether you've had an attitude, whether you've uh, been talking smack, whether you um, have not been praying, whether you have not been um, speaking affirmations over yourself, over your husband, your situation whether you have not been studying and spending time with with god in his word whatever you have been sowing you will also reap that is a true statement that is a true statement whatever you have been sowing you shall reap and it is going to come a time it is coming a time where god is getting ready to judge god's getting ready to judge and wherever area you are in um concerning concerning your marriage concerning your relationship concerning where you are God is getting ready to come. God is getting ready to come and show himself and show himself. So I want to encourage my wives. If you have not, if you have not, it's every day is a new day. The Bible tells us in, um, I think it's in Lamentations, that God gives us grace and mercy. It's new each and every day. It's, it's new each and every day. So you have an opportunity to start over each and every day. So I want to encourage my wives. And this is something that had just been on my heart since this morning, even though I wasn't only here this morning. But it's been on my heart this morning to make sure that I share that with my wives. Start today start today whatever it is that you are um speaking over your spouse speaking over your marriage speaking over yourself make sure that you are speaking words of affirmation make this make sure that you are speaking life make sure that you are getting rid of the attitude make sure you are getting rid of the moodiness make sure that you are getting rid of the negative energy come on jesus make sure that you are speaking forth uh, what you want God to bring to pass because what you speak that that Bible verse is so cliche but it, it is so so um true what you speak um what you say those things will come forward those things will come out and so I want to encourage my wives on today to make sure that you begin even today even today hello sissy are you still enjoying your vacation all right so the by uh, Google before we get to the Bible, the Google says what I just want to just give you the definition of spiritual um, manifestation. Um, it says it is the theory that through regular meditation and positive constructive thought, you can make your dreams desires come to a reality. I would like to even include to say you can make. Um, Whatever words that you have been meditating and, and, and standing on concerning your marriage, concerning uh, the things that you want God to do concerning your marriage, concerning your husband, those things will come forward. Those things will come forward as you continue to place your mind on the Lord, as you continue to um, stay focused on what God is telling you to do in this hour. Those things will come forward. OK, spiritual manifestation holds that if you really want something and truly believe it's possible, it will happen. Listen, this is the hour for things to really come forward. This is the hour for things to come about. This is the hour for change. And so I want to encourage my wives to do not get away from speaking um, manifestation. Do not get away from speaking um, life over your husband, life over your situation, life over your dead marriage. Listen, I understand. I understand. Do not get away from that in this hour, in this season, because God is getting ready to judge and God is getting ready to do some things and wherever wherever you are in this season that is what it would be for you okay that is that is your next chapter that is what it would be for you all right so i wanted to just put that part out there first real fast now let's review from last week last week we talked about abigail's truth we talked about abigail's truth and how she you know came to david and was like look David, you know the word. You already know what God is saying. You already know what God is saying. You won't let my foolish husband come between what God has already promised you. You won't let my foolish husband uh, bring bring hardship. You won't let my foolish husband take take you out. You know what God word tells us. Vengeance is mine. Vengeance is mine and God will repay. So Abigail basically shared uh, God's truth um, with David and convinced him and his man to turn their... Uh, their their swords basically they put their swords down they was like you know what you right we ain't gonna even go after him we ain't gonna even come out your household you got a, a real good point right here um we ain't gonna even do that and so that's what last week was about if you have not had a chance to um go and see uh have it have not have not had a chance to see that one you can go and visit that one um it is on my page as well all right so 
This week, this week, we're talking about um, Abigail and her hospitality and her given spirit. All right. Um, the homework was from First Samuel 25 verses, I think, 27 to 31 is where you were supposed to read. And so we're going to start from there. All right. Abigail provided food and substance for David and his men. She showed David the gift of kindness. She showed him hospitality. All right. She showed him hospitality. God had blessed, blessed Abigail with many things. And in return, she was a blessing to others. And though her husband Nabal refused to be, though her husband Nabal refused and he continued in his selfishness, he's his desires will soon consume him as we continue to read through the story. His desires will soon consume him. Abigail asked David for forgiveness on behalf of her husband's foolery. All right. So look, originally David was just like, you know, he sent out message. We've been over here watching your sheep, holding your man down, making sure nobody doesn't come and harm them, making sure nobody don't come for them. I sent, David sent a word by his man to Nabal saying, hey, can you send us some supplies? Can you send us a little food, a little bread? Just give us something to hold us over until, you know, we get to that next place or whatever. And so Nabal was like, David, David, who was this David do? I don't even know a David. Jesse, who is Jesse? I don't know no Jesse. And so basically Nabal dismissed David's request, dismissed David's request because Nabal was not aware who David was. This is a king. You talking to about this, honey. This was a king. And so from there, David was like, oh, we finna strap up. We finna go and come after this man's whole house. So help me. As long as I live this day, this house is coming down. I'm taking that house down, him down, and everybody in it. So because um, one of his, uh, one of uh, Nabal's uh, and Abigail's servants were, were uh, hurt, got word of this, they came back to Abigail was like, look, girl, come on. Your husband done came for the king. Now he's going to come and take this whole house out. You got to help us. You got to help us. And so Abigail went into boss mode, honey. She went into boss mode. Abigail went into boss mode and started preparing stuff, started getting things prepared, getting things ready, saying, look, go ahead ahead of me. Go take David and stuff. Let me get this man here, you know, right. Make sure I got, you know, everything good with him. Y'all go ahead and I'm coming. I'll meet y'all there. I'll meet y'all there. So the, the, the service went on out to go and meet. David trying to, you know, stop them in their tracks. Like, don't come for us. Don't come for us. Abigail's back home, you know, trying to figure out, should I tell this fool what I just did? Or should I just go on ahead and let the Lord God and order my steps? So instead, she went ahead and let God order her steps, okay? Went forward. She met David and she fell to her face, fell to her face. And she was like, okay, look, sir, <laughs> my husband is a fool. My husband is a fool. And if I would have even known that you was asking for these things, I would have given these things to you. Do not let my foolish husband, do not allow, don't allow my foolish husband to stop you from what God is getting ready to do and how God is getting ready to bless you. And it was, it was, it was Abigail's humbleness. It was Abigail's, um, um, her, her, her determined to make sure that her household was still functioning, was still able to go. Was she came and kind of like intervened on her household's um, behalf. She intervened on her husband's behalf. All right. And so that's basically what we are as far as that now. So now today from um, reading our reading for my homework, Abigail was at a place where she was like, okay, Here's your food because I know you. I know your stomach was hungry. All right, I know you was hungry. So here you go. Here's your here's your food and whatever else I can give you. You know, David, uh, uh, Abigail won't let David know that I'm here to serve you. Whatever it is that you need, how I can help you, how I can be assistance to you. God has blessed us in a way where I'm able to give you. If there's anything else you need, sir, just let me know. Just let me know. All right. And so God blessed Abigail with a way so she was able to bless David and his men. All right. Next week, we're going to finish, well, Tuesday, we're going to finish up the final part of this story. All right. We're going to finish up the final part of this story. But that's what, that's what has been taking place pretty much in a nutshell over these past few weeks that we have been going over Abigail. And I just want to remind, again, Abigail is a boss. She was a boss. If you have not read her story, go back and read the whole thing. First, um, read First Samuel uh, 25. She was a boss. She was a boss. The way she moved, networked, and made things happen on behalf of her foolery husband that she was living with, that she was dealing with, that she was married to, God still favored her. God still favored her. And that's just one of the things I want to point out to my wives. Listen, wives, don't think for a moment that God is overlooking you. Don't think for a moment that God is mistreating you. Don't think for a moment if God 
God has asked you to stay with that unhealthy husband, that he's just going to let his unhealthy husband just do whatever, get away with whatever he want to get away with, do whatever he want to do. No, sir, buddy. This is why manifestation is so important. This is why affirmations is so important. This is why you have to declare and decree a thing for it to be so. This is why warfare prayers are so important. This is why wives have to get into their position, get in alignment with what it is that God is calling them to do because they are missing instructions from God concerning what he would have them to do next. All right. What he would have them to do next. And so since David was hungry, okay, <laughs> this is, this is what it boils down to. David was hungry. All right. And so I asked you this question to my wife today. What are you feeding your husband? What are you feeding your husband? Whether he's in the house or whether he's not. Because some wife think because he's not here, I don't got to do a certain thing. And I want to just caution you on that. Yes, you still have work to do, wife, even if he's not in the house. Your obligation as his wife is to keep him lifted up in prayer. Your obligation as his wife is to keep the enemy from off of his back. Your obligation as his wife is to cover him, is to cover him and to sanctify him. Okay, that is your obligation, right? That is your obligation. If God has not given you the okay to divorce this man, if God has not given you the okay to move on with your life and start over and this and that, whatever, but he is allowing that grace, he is giving your husband that grace at that time to come to himself. During that time, wife, you have work to do. During that time, you're supposed to be praying. During that time, you're supposed to be speaking life. During that time, you are supposed to be praying the divider off of his back and praying your husband back to his rightful place, which is home with his wife and children. All right? So I asked the question, what are you feeding your husband? What are you feeding your husband? And I'm not just talking about physical foods. I'm not just talking about physical foods. But what are you feeding him spiritually? Again, whether that's on the outside or on the inside, whether he's home, whether he's not home, as long as you are married to that to that husband and God has not released you, has not released you from that marital covenant, you are to be covering him. All right. You are to be covering him. Are you feeding him affirmations? Are you feeding him motivation and esteem? Are you reminding him that he can do anything? Are you supporting him? Did you tell him today how much you love him in spite of him getting on your nerves? Did you wrap your arms around him even if he pulls away a little bit? You know, he might have pulled away a little bit. That's all right. Did you remind him of, of that? Uh, did you remember to purchase that certain item that you know he enjoys or he likes? Did you plan a special evening for him? Okay. Did you listen to him? Did you hear his words and hear his side? Did you ask him how his day was at work? All right. Or did you just bum rush him as soon as he got off, you know, with questions and all your emotions and threw all this stuff on him? Like what, what, what you giving this man, what you feeding this man? Did you put um, on his very nice, uh, the, the, the attire that he likes to see you in that, that nice lingerie that he likes to see you in? Did you provide a need of his on today? Did you show him some type of support? Whether it was, honey, I heard you. Is there anything I can do for you in this season? I heard you. Is there anything that you want me to do for you right now? I heard you. All right. Did you overlook an offense and offer grace instead? Have you been praying for him? This is the biggest thing. If you don't hear anything else on Coach T uh, live on, on any of my lives or anything that I share on this on this page, you're going to hear about prayer. Because we are called to pray for our husband. We are called to cover him. The foolish ones, the crazy ones, the evil ones, the ones I don't know if they're going to come and the addicted ones. We are called to pray for him. What are you feeding your husband in this hour? What are you feeding your husband in this season? And if you're not covering him and keeping him in prayer, listen, that's a that's that's something that going on with you. That's something that you need to you need to look at yourself in the mirror and see what you're doing. You need to address yourself because as his wife, you are called to pray for him. As his wife, you are called to speak life over him. As his wife, you are called to speak uh to speak things for for him, all right? You are called to pray for your husband. You are called to pray for your husband. And what you feed him does matter. What you feed him does matter. Why? Do you have the gift of hospitality? Do you have a gift of hospitality? All right. Is that, some, is that something that you do naturally? Is that something that you, you do on a, on a normal? Are you good at uh, being hospitable towards your husband? Are you good at being hospitable for, for, towards your husband? So y'all know I always like to share... A little transparency, a little transparency. Like I said, um, we started this originally with Lent, all right? Um, this was part of a, a wise Lent devotion. And one of the things that I got, I got um, 
made a decision to do was to not eat fried foods, right? <clears throat> hmm. So I was not supposed to eat fried foods. And I've been doing good, okay? I've been doing real, real good. But the weekend come and when my husband is home, one of his gifts, his gifts to the food with the passing by, okay. One of his gifts is um, his love languages. His love language is the gift of giving. You know, he likes to give gifts. And so whether he give gifts, he what he most like and what he most enjoys doing is being hospitable towards his family. Where, you know, he loves cooking for us or, you know, making sure that we, you know, have certain foods or, you know, us trying new foods and trying new things. Like he, that's his area. He's a giver when it comes to like, he loves to serve his family by fixing us food, buying food, purchasing food, having us try new things, that, that type of thing or whatever. And so what had happened was we had ordered from the Outback, Okay. The Outback is one of our restaurants we, we like. We've been going to for a while. We like that restaurant. And I wasn't thinking. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't thinking, really, when I ordered the coconut shrimp. When I ordered the coconut shrimp, um, I just was like, okay, we you know we order it. It wasn't until I picked the coconut shrimp and started putting it towards my mouth and I seen it. And I was like, oh, my God. I am not supposed to be eating fried foods. Listen, people. It was a whole wrap after that. It was a whole wrap. I said, Lord, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Just that fast, I had totally forgot that I had made a commitment not to eat any fast food, any any fried food during the Lent, during the, you know, the Lent season, which is not over with until technically the 31st. So I had to ask for forgiveness last night. I had to ask for forgiveness last night because I did not think about it until after that shrimp fry had went in my mouth. <clears throat> it was a wrap. And so I say, I say that is how are you being hospitable towards your husband? How, what are you doing to serve him? What are you doing, um, to even serve your household? Abigail was a server. She was a server. She made sure that in spite of her foolery husband being how he was, she was still able to serve her, her, um, her service. She was able to still serve David and his man. She was able to still be what she needed to be. She didn't get away from who she was because her husband was who he was. All right. And so I wanted to just encourage wives to make sure that you are doing it, that you are doing that even on a regular. All right. So, what are you wanting God to manifest in your marriage? What are you wanting God to manifest in with your marriage? Whether it's your marriage, with, with your husband, or even for your next chapter. What are you speaking over yourself? What are you speaking over your husband? What are you speaking over your marriage? What are you speaking over your children? What are you speaking over your household? What are you speaking over uh um just speaking out in general just just saying things out in general what are you what are you saying what are what are the words that you're speaking over yourself all right and so i want to share with you three things you can begin doing to prepare for your manifestation or your next chapter all right three things that you can start doing number one get on board with purpose Get on board with purpose. This is one of my biggies. I'm a visionary by nature. I'm a visionary by nature. And what happens is a lot of times as a visionary, we can see certain things. Uh, or God will give us a vision about a certain thing. And it's like you can see a certain thing, but then you can see that the, the sea was actually present. And it makes you just like, uh, you know, I can see the potential in a person and see the, the, the greatness that God has for them and to see them stuck and not even willing to 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 want to pursue what God wants for their life. It makes me sick. It makes me sick. It drives me mad because it's like, oh, my God, God has so much in store for you. But you are in this stuck place. You are in this stuck place. So one of the things I want to encourage my wife to start doing in this hour, in this season is get on board with purpose. What was the last thing God told you to do? Do you know that you are supposed to be doing a thing or not? If you're not doing that thing, you need to be doing it. You need to see what it is that you need to be doing. Why? You cannot get stuck in your husband's unhealthy choices. Abigail was making moves, honey. I call her boss. Abigail was making moves. Her husband was at the house, holding on to all their possessions, holding on to stuff, and Abigail was over here serving. She was over here getting David and his man stuff, take this bread, get that, get that oil, take this, go ahead ahead of me, and I'll meet y'all there. I'm going to bring some more stuff. Abigail was making moves, okay? She was doing stuff. You cannot, wives, you cannot, wives, get stuck in... Um, your husband's unhealthiness you cannot you cannot and i want to encourage you on today to don't do that don't do that 
the choices that your spouse makes is has nothing to do with you has nothing to do with you if you have already said your part if you have already shared your heart if you have already come to him and explained to him how you feel about it and they have still made a decision to do what they want to do listen okay listen God said, it's mine from here. You did your part. You did your part. Now I need you to keep moving. You can't get stuck on what they're doing. You have to keep moving. You have to learn how to see a thing and don't see it. See it, but don't see it. Oh, you act like that today? Okay, I don't even see that. You have to know how to keep moving. You cannot, wife, get caught up in your husband's unhealthiness. You have to keep moving. Abigail did not get caught up in naval foolishness. Abigail kept moving and she kept moving as a boss. She kept moving as a woman of God. She kept moving and serving. She did not allow allow her husband to stop her from being who God has called her to be. She did not allow her husband to stop her from, from being what God was saying that he wanted her to do and what he wanted her to be in spite of him acting the way he's acting. All right. So I want to encourage wives, get on board with purpose, get on board with purpose. Okay. The second thing, get on board with discerning the season that you're in. Get on board with discerning the season that you're in. What season are you in? What season is your marriage in? All right. What season are you in during this time? What season is your marriage in? Um, locate it. Once you locate it, get some scriptures, get Bible, get promises to stand on it, to 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 declare, to, to decree and declare a, a thing. All right. Start that process. Once you do that, begin doing your necessary work. OK, not your spouse's work, because that's going to be on him. Not your spouse's work. Begin doing your necessary work. Begin doing your necessary work. Get specific instructions from the Lord concerning your next move. Wife, I can't tell you what season you are in in your marriage. Only you know. Only you know what you what you are. Only you know what you are. And if and if it's pain, if it's if it's pain, if it's pain that you're dealing with, if it's pain that you're suffering with, you need to find out what kind of pain that you're dealing and suffering with. What's going on? You need to be able to uh um. Uh, Get awareness and get clarity about what area, what 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 is it you're dealing with? What is that hard thing specifically that you're dealing with in your marriage and what you want God to do for you next? You need to be able to discern exactly where you are. And so I would even encourage you to start writing down, Lord, I don't like this about my husband. It makes me feel this type of way. But I am willing to keep moving, to keep going and doing what you have called me to do. God, I desire to do this thing. I desire to do that thing. Something about a pen and a paper, honey, you can do You can do some miraculous things with a pen and paper. All you have to do, if you can't articulate those words and necessarily get those words out what you want to say to God, write it down. Write it down. And God knows your heart. He knows your heart. But even with him knowing your heart, write those things out and get it out. The Bible talks about how um, writing a vision and making it plain. You need to get that stuff out. Let God know where you are and how you feel about a thing. And then help, let, he, will, he will help you from there. He will help you from there. Wives, you need to know and be able to discern the season that you're in concerning your unhealthy marriage. The season that you're in concerning your um, relationship with your husband. You need to know what season that you're in. And once you get, and once you get to that place, start taking the necessary steps to move forward. Okay. And the last thing, the last thing, number three, get on board with your health. Get on board with your health. If you're planning for your future and planning to be here for it, and if you have to take charge, if you're planning for your future and planning to be here for it, you need to take charge over your health. You need to take charge over your health. All right. Don't live your best life now, okay? Ain't nobody got time for this. I'm still young. I got stuff I need to be doing. I want to be happy. I want to do this. And I'm not sitting here saying that being happy is a, is a bad thing. I'm not saying that at all. We all want to be happy, okay? Everybody wants to be happy. But you have to understand that happiness comes with for what you're doing in that moment, in that in that time. But joy is longer. Joy lasts way longer than happiness. So you don't want to just be happy. You want to be joyful, okay? You want to be joyful. And so you got to get away from the temporary things, the temporary things, the, the just the, oh, I ain't going to do this. I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to deal with this. I ain't going to deal with that. It's like, okay, well, what, you, what are you willing to deal with? What are you willing to suffer through? What are you willing to go through and allow God to build you up, to make you better, to make you stronger, to make you a healthier, greater, person so that he can use you for his betterment 
What are you willing to suffer through? That is a question that you need to ask yourself. Is it your marriage that you're willing to suffer through? Because if you don't want to do the hard work in your marriage, you have to do it somewhere. It's going to come down the line somewhere. Whether it's your marriage, whether it's somewhere else, God is saying, I need to know that I can use you. I can use you for the future. You have to get healthy in the season wise. You have to get healthy. All right. Um, don't live your best life now. And then when the future comes, you are broken down and towed down and you can't do nothing and you won't be no good or no good use for the Lord. All right. I'm talking about your spiritual health, your mental health, your emotional health and your physical health. It's not just, okay, I'm going to work out, work out, work out, work out. And you got all this work out and you skinny and you fine. You got the tight, uh, uh, body and everything is boom, boom, bam. And everything is right. But then you mess up in your mind mentally. All right. You mess up in your mind. You mess up in your mind. Emotionally, you, you are not strong. Emotionally, you are all, all over the place. Emotionally, you can't even hold your tongue or hold your words in. Okay. So it's not just about being healthy in one area. You need to be healthy in every area in every area. And not only that, it ain't good to be okay. You, you fine. You, you skinny, you this, you that or whatever got your body on right all right you you got you got this going on but you don't know nothing about what god word says concerning your situation you don't even know how to get to god concerning your situation that ain't good that ain't good either all right that's not good either so god is calling wives in this season to prepare themselves prepare themselves and get on board with your help prepare yourself and be available to do not just Merit life, okay, because merit life is yes, that's that's gonna be there. But God said, I have other assignments for you to do. Be prepared to do God's work, God's work, and then go back to the first one. That's how I get on board with purpose. Get on board with purpose, all right. If you are having uh uh problems in this area, you need help. If you need help in this area, if you need help in this area, this is where her buoyancy boost comes in hand. Y'all see that my little buoyancy cup. This is one of the cups that comes in your self-care box um, that I send you with your her bonus boots. But God is saying, I need to know if I have door, my doors on board to do the necessary work in this hour, in this season. If you are having a, 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 a problem, a need help in these areas mentally, spiritually, emotionally, Physically, these are the areas that we highlight in her buoyancy boost. All right, this is what we highlight in her buoyancy boost. Her buoyancy boost is a nine weeks curriculum that I offer to my wives who are ready to invest in their self care and they self and soul care and they self and soul care because it's not just about self care, it's about your soul. It's about your soul. Okay, I coach wives on how to become unchained from their husband's unhealthy behavior or their husband's unhealthy choices. And I use a 13 step self-care formula to help you navigate through that. All right. I use a self-care, uh, 13 step self-care formula to help you navigate through that. We walk through that. Um, you get five live sessions with me. You get five live sessions with me. And the remaining four sessions is for strictly support, guidance, and encouragement. Support, guidance, and encouragement. All right. It's a curriculum that I have put together um, to really help wives doing their hardship in their marital covenant, doing a hardship as they're transitioning, whether you are with your husband, whether your husband is not with you, whether he's in the whether he's in the house with you, but things are still not right. You still have some things that you're struggling with from the past, whatever it may be. This is what her buoyancy boost is for. It is to help the wife get on board with what she needs to get on board with concerning her life so she can be a healthier her for her husband. So she can be a healthier whole her so her husband can see that. Her husband can see her being healthy and her being her being right. And it, it will in, in in turns attract him to want to do the same thing. It should. It should. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, that's not your problem either. You continue to pray for him. You continue to pray for him. But her bonus boost is a spiritual investment. It's a spiritual investment. It's a marital investment for wives who are trying to know their part, their role, they do what they want to do, what they're supposed to do, and do what God is asking them to do. Listen, if God has asked you why to stay in an unhealthy marriage, you need to take her buoyancy boost. If God is telling you to not divorce that man, but you know this man is doing X, Y, and Z, and he's causing all kinds of rapping, and you are hurting, and you are in pain, and you are crying, and asking God why, Lord, release me from this, you need to take her buoyancy boost. Do not go and sign no divorce papers. Do not go and go and file for no divorce until you come Walk through her buoyancy boost. Allow God time to speak to your soul concerning your marriage and what he wants you to do concerning that. And then from there, he will also help you navigate, navigate through whatever it is that you're going through in your marital covenant. 
whether it's adultery, whether it's separation, whether it's you and your husband are being intimate anymore, whether you and your husband are separated, whether you and your husband don't communicate. Listen, 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 Jesus. Come on, come on, Holy Spirit. God is faithful, all right? God is faithful. I got to sit if I hang up. God is faithful. And if he has told you a thing, please believe me. Please believe me. I don't just come over here and just be talking, just be talking. I come over here and say what I know because I have walked through this myself, okay? I have walked through this myself. And one of the things I understand, I understand more than anything, is a hurting wife who is dealing with a husband who is toxic, who is unhealthy, who um, he, it just seems like he just don't want to do the right thing. I know what that feels like. I know what that pain feels like. And I want to tell you on today, if you stand on the promises of God and continue to trust God in his process and allow God to bring these things forward and bring these things to pass, you will see the manifestation of the Lord. This is what I try to tell wives. You got to start praying. You got to start praying. No, you might not see it in a month. No, you might not see it in a year. No, you might not even see it in two years. But you will start seeing the manifestation of the Lord if you allow him the opportunity to change and work in you. If you allow God the opportunity to change and work in you, you will see the manifestation. As you are praying and asking God to cover your husband and get him right, God is doing something so much greater in you, guys. It's not just about your husband. This is what I try to get wives to understand. It's not just about, oh my God, my husband is this and he's not doing this and you not oh my god it's so much bigger if, if, that, if that's what you are you ain't ready for this honey you're not ready for her buoyancy boost her buoyancy boost is about helping the wife molding the wife strengthening the wife guiding the wife supporting the wife on getting on board with what god has for them it is about getting her to that healthy place so that she can be that light for her husband so she can be that representation for her husband so she can stand on guard and know how to pray for her husband so she can know how to stand on guard and pray for her family and pray for her household god is giving that wife a different type of strength a different type of grace to be able to, to sustain even a situation like that it's not about what your husband is doing right now i'm telling you he's gonna come back around i'm telling you he will be back i'm telling you he will do what he's supposed to do if you are praying for him and sending on god's word concerning him if you are placing your trust your faith your hope in the lord not yourself not what, what other people are telling you not in what the world is saying not in what your mom and them said your cousin them around the corner not none of them if you are placing your trust in the Lord and allowing him to work in you, to better you, to get all that gunk out your heart, you ain't going to be able to deal with a fool. Abigail was not able to deal with a fool without her having a relationship with the Lord. Abigail was not able to deal with Nabal like she was dealing with Nabal without her having the relationship that she had with the Lord. You're not going to be able to deal with that fool on your own. It's going to, everything in you is going to tell you to leave this man, to, to, leave, to, 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 to leave out this relationship. It, this is not what God has called me to. But you got to understand, God is calling you something so much better. He is, want, he is wanting to use you on a whole nother level. I hope and pray that wives receive that on today. I hope and pray that wives receive that on today. God is saying, I I am doing something greater in this hour in this season for you locate what season you are in your marriage and begin to manifest get get scripture get promises stand on god word and watch him bring things to pass it is time it is time it is the hour to get healthy in this season god is getting ready to do something don't miss out on that and so if you have not Sign up for your Her Buoyancy Boost. You can sign up at www.marriagechroniclesbytanika.com. I hope this message has been a blessing to you. Listen, we're going to wrap up next week. Like I said, the homework for next week, we're going to finish We're going to finish out the Abigail uh, Bible study. And it's 1 first, first Samuel 25. What is the homework, child? Okay, 1 Samuel 25 versus... Um, 32 to 44 versus 32 to 44. So we will finish out on Tuesday. That will be our last day. I hope this Lent devotion has been a blessing to you. If you have not caught any of them, you can always go back on my um, His Wife Boyancy uh, page and review them. Or you can catch them on YouTube. I'll also check them on my YouTube page. Um, and you can go back and go through all of them. All of them. This is week six. On Tuesday, we will do week seven and we will be finished. All right. Listen, thank you guys for your support. I'll talk to you soon. Blessings.